This is Melvin Gordon from the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Welcome in once again, Monday. Recording the show Monday, which is why Mike isn't here. Because right. Mike Mike is having some troubles. Mike lives at the airport now. Yeah, we fully expected to have the Hitman back in action today. It's just Jason and myself again, and of course, Jay Grizz. <laughs> But who's always willing to fill in, and I got to give him credit for that, considering. Uh, but Mike was supposed to be here uh, several days ago, but unfortunately, um, him and American Airlines are having some. You know, I they're having words. I didn't put this together, but apparently, so Mike uh, he had his plane canceled twice. Two different planes canceled. He's with his stranding, family stranding on vacation, him and his family there at, at the airport. And I did not yet put together both times the equipment malfunction and the planes were called in they said by a bear and i did not yet put that oh. i did not really think about the fact that this is probably just jay grizz trying the, to stay the on the prob- show the thing is, is if, uh, i understand jay grizz wanting to keep the role it right. makes sense yeah, of course it's covetous. it's a very uh, wonderful job and and he does it well but why make Mike with his family of five sit on an airplane on the tarmac for 90 minutes, then deboard, wait in an airport for seven hours, and then get sent home mm-hmm. no, to not. or well, get sent to a hotel and then be compensated with nothing? Look, you that just, just you, seems over the top rude. Just don't cross Jay Chris. That's I don't know rude. What did, but. but we do have a great show for you today. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, we've got a great quick question. I'm going to quiz Jason on on the quick question a little bit. We've got some mailbag on the show today, a ton of hype train. We'll get your fantasy football team ready to go. Get it right. We'll be in Chicago. All of us will be in Chicago on Friday for the first live show on the People's Fantasy Tour, which I'm sure you're very excited about, Jason. I am super, super excited about it. If you're in Chicago, you've been waiting to get your tickets. They're going to go soon, so uh, go to BallersLive.com. We'll see you on Friday. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, you going to do any more jumping off the stage? So I, what Andy's referring to, I believe it was the New York show where I decided to leap in the beginning before the show. You were very, the you were very hyped. The hype train was, was real. <sighs> the music I, was playing. And I, I, I leapt before I looked, <laughs> as the phrase goes, and I <laughs> fell before I landed. Yes. And I <clears> promise everybody out there, I will be leaping again. There is oh, no, my goodness. there is no fear, regardless of how high the stage is. No, I will do a show with a torn ACL, <laughs> and then I'll go to the hospital. Just to kind of uh, relate to your dynasty running back. Oh, don't don't be smart, girly here. Let's move on. All right, quick question for today's episode comes from Hayden in Texas. Hayden writes in, it's a good question, says, Hey, Ballers, huge fan of the show. What is your opinion on drafting both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin this year? And are there any other receiver stacks that you would consider? Does it change if you've got three wide receivers to start? Uh, Jason, you are squirming in your chair over there with the... Nobody uh, could see me. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody could see you on YouTube. No, no, no. I was off screen. Thanks oh, for calling it out. I'm sorry. Jason was trying to get his monitor headphones working, <laughs> and I don't know what was happening. Uh, it would it was have like been, an exorcism. It would have been funny. But uh, so what's what are you quizzing me here? On? Well, I first let's answer that one. Would you ever want to draft both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? So yes. that you're looking at a wide receiver stack situation. Yeah, I mean, there is a situation where I would want that. I don't, I don't seek that out though. Like, I don't prefer that. If I took Mike Evans, and I'm on the, I'm, you know, in the draft at a place where Chris Godwin is going near other good quality guys that I've got ranked the same, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot. I'm not going to try to do the double or, uh, you know, sometimes people view that as having the handcuff. If either goes down, their other gets better. I'm going to try to spread it out, but probably not going to use a first and fifth round pick. 
to try to handcuff a wide receiver. Right, but uh, you know, on the flip side, though, if if Godwin started falling, where I feel like he is more valuable than the other wide receivers around there, I would absolutely. I'm I'm not against having two wide receivers on the same team. We have a long track record of usually on average there's about five teams per year that produce multiple top 24 wide receivers, so you should be able to do it. There's a number of teams that I look through, and I'll ask you which ones you'd be happy with, but you do run the risk that, you know, a bad week for a team, and you're, you know, if they're starting two wide receivers, you're in, in trouble. And I'd be much more inclined to do that on a great offense and in a league where I'm starting three wide receivers on a regular basis to mitigate some of that risk. Geronimo Allison and Devontae Adams. So, yes, 100%, I would be willing. The, Just because Allison's free. The cheap extra piece. I will say this, though. I am, I am starting to strongly open the possibility that it could be MBS. Yeah. I, I'm not positive. You know, rewind the clock a month, and I thought it was pretty much a shoe-in for Geronimo Allison to have that number two role established. But all the camp reports, beat writers, uh, Aaron Rodgers himself – the way they're talking about Marquez Valdez Scantling, yeah, I mean, that, he appears to be the number two. In fact, in two wide receiver sets, it's been Geronimo on the sideline. So, uh, what about uh, kind of some of these maybe more middling situations? Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller, no, Sean Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, no, Thielen and Diggs. That's one that you're yeah you're going to smile about. I would be fine with both Thielen and Diggs. Any two of the Rams: Woods, Cooks, Cooks, Cup. Woods. Yeah, give me any cup of Cooks what about, and Woods. <laughs> what if you're in a three-wide receiver league and you can get all three? I would play all three. That'd be I, all right, huh? I genuinely would be fine with that. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Yeah, that one's that one's a little bit rougher. Um, I guess it's, it's somewhat similar to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. It, it is. It seems very similar. It's very similar, so it's just a matter of the cost of Mike Williams. A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd. That one... I, I, you know, I was looking at wide receiver stacks. That one's so interesting to me because I feel like I'm fine with them. But at the same time, I'm not fine with Andy Dalton. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. it's not like taking the shot at the Green Bay Packers, uh, you know, whether you take the shot at MVS or Geronimo Allison, they're cheap, whatever. You're still taking the shot on Aaron Rodgers supporting multiple top-end wide receivers. I'm fine with that. Hopkins and Fuller? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be okay with that. Landry, OBJ. No. No? I, I think Landry's price, unless it's changed drastically in the last two weeks, is is too expensive for how Baker's going to spread the ball around and how Odell Beckham will command targets. It's not – when when you're as talented as he is, he's not going down in the target count. Jay Gris says he's fine with Anthony Miller, Taylor Gabriel. Oh, really? Yeah. Even that far? Doesn't, doesn't mind it whatsoever. Wow. Follow us on Twitter. At the FF Ballers. We're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And you can follow each of us individually. Mike, who is not here, is at FF Hitman on both Instagram and Twitter. Jason is at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. The website's the fantasy footballers.com. And uh, I do want to take just a second to uh, proclaim the greatness of our writing staff because they have put yes. out so many high quality articles this offseason. So I really encourage you to go to the website. Read some of their work. There's a number of articles. Uh, I love the path to a wide receiver one articles that have been coming out this offseason, making the case for a number of the, you know, the Godwin, Mike Williams type. Is there, what are the odds of a Robbie Anderson becoming a wide receiver one? Mm -hmm. A Sammy Watkins. A yeah. Sammy Watkins. Um, sure. Oh, man, you and I had it out on Sammy Watkins. We have had it In out. In the public domain. We went to the town square. On the show, on Twitter. off the show, we just keep going back and forth on Twitter most recently until I found out he believes he's a lizard person. I might be <laughs> I might be off of the Sammy Watkins train. So it, all the statistical arguments aside, like those you were willing to dismiss, yep. we can frame them however we want. Yeah. But, but the lizard person thing, a little different. Yeah, the lizard person, <laughs> that's, that's a hard pill now, to Brooks, swallow. <laughs> Brooks, I'm sure Brooks is over there saying like, do people know what you're talking about? No, people don't. I didn't. Do you know. want to explain that, Brooks? I mean, you're aware, right? Uh, go ahead, Jason. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Sammy Watkins believes he's. A, that means he's an apologist. He's he believes a, he's a lizard person too. He believes he's a lizard person. That he's that's not, the whole story. That he's not human, and it's not a joke. <laughs> so that's a joke. Um. So you might be fading him due to reptilian 
problems. Due to, um, you know, I've been worried so That's much cold about... That's cold-blooded, Jason. I've been, oh, <laughs> I've been worried about, you know, like injuries below the shoulders, but I, you know, with Sammy, like all the way down to the feet, but I think maybe I've been looking at the wrong <laughs> It's above the shoulder. Area. <laughs> Give me some issues. Uh, a reminder, head to ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get the absolute best tool for your upcoming drafts, updated all off season, and one dollar of every UDK sold goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They're also our partner on tour. The VIP ticket sales and all of the sales to the Phoenix live show go directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We'll have some people um, at the live shows, and it's just a, a great partnership that we have the opportunity to be a part of and contribute to their goals of uh, ending childhood cancer. And so uh, support them. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. All right, we have some news and then we have some hype. And so we'll talk about both of those. We'll talk a little bit about how much you as a fantasy owner should read into the hype because it's fun. I mean, oh, yeah, I've, I've said I say it every year. The All the hype for my players on my dynasty team. Oh, it's yeah, I love it. It's the best. All right, here's some news from ESPN. Chris Herndon facing the likelihood of a two-game suspension. Chris Herndon, a I would say a surprise, a surprisingly productive tight end in his rookie season last year. Some startable games, <clears throat> startable games, and a um, a rapport built with Sam Darnold. Yeah, he he showed out uh, very well. I would say him and Mark Andrews were last year's rookies that really. Uh, you know, rookie tight ends don't do much. You've got to look for specific flashes, um, and both of those players showed it, but Chris Herndon isn't a player that you're going to be drafting now, especially if he's facing a two-game suspension. So to bring this up, in the Ultimate Draft Kit, we do currently have Chris Herndon as a sleeper tight end. With a two-game suspension, do you change your outlook on that? Is he somebody that you will be petitioning Mike and I to remove from the sleeper category because of the two-game Suspension? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to encourage anyone out there to draft someone who could be something when he's already spent time hurting your roster. I think it's a waste of a pick. I, I don't usually recommend, unless you're in some kind of tight end premium, even drafting multiple tight ends. I think that's usually a waste of a roster spot. Certainly not somebody you're going to draft and hold. Right. I don't want to draft and hold him. So, yes, I will be petitioning to remove him. Okay. All right. I'm sure, you know. Grizz will want Burton to take his place or something. Mm -hmm. The Saints have signed yes. wide receiver yes. Richard Matthews. Mediocre signing of the week. I got to be honest with you. How dare you? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't even feel good calling him mediocre. And I feel like you're not giving him his due. Well, Richard Matthews, we were talking a little bit before the show. Um had a had some productive seasons in Tennessee back to back 800 yard oh, seasons gosh. no look I mean we not we, true 795 yards in 2017 okay Jason. fair enough um here's the truth Richard Matthews say whatever you want about him Andy you don't believe he's a good wide receiver anymore I mean, anymore okay yes. I, I believe he is a good wide receiver he's probably going to be irrelevant even on the Saints because he's going to be at best third in the pecking order, but it is at least interesting when a guy who is, I believe he's still 29, he has proven that he can succeed a little bit in the NFL, and then he goes to Drew Brees. You know, if you're in a deep dynasty league and you've got, let's say you've got a team like our producer Al Borland from the Spitballers podcast, right? A tr a, a, just a dumpster uh, pile, dumpster <laughs> fire <laughs> is the word I was looking for of a team. A pile of dumpsters. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I would drop any number of one of your players for Richard Matthews. Oh, wow. I will bet you right now, right here on the show, that he doesn't make the team. You want to take that water bet, Mr. Richard Matthews? I mean, you uh -huh. must. You must. You just said to pick okay. him up. All so. right, I'll take that. Water bet. How's Cam <laughs> Meredith's health? <laughs> I love the fact that you thought he might be the three. Um, add another three to it. Maybe he's the six. We'll see. Uh, mini camp notes, some hype train news. Dante Pettis turning heads at 49ers mini camp. Dante's body is maturing, said the most handsome Jimmy Garoppolo. Coming out of breaks with power, has speed. 
he's great. I mean, we we said this for the last, you know, I was beating the drum for Pettis last year. I was a big believer. This off season, Andy, you watched some more film, fell in love, and then you went out and traded. You put yes. your money where your mouth was yes, in our I, dynasty league. Dynasty pickup, traded for him, and uh, breakout candidate for our ultimate draft kit. Certainly is. <laughs> However. One of the problems with Pettis, if you look on film, him coming out, he's a, he's six foot one, played pretty svelte. I mean, he was 181 pounds or something when he came out. So I like the fact that he's putting on a little bit of weight. He's an explosive player. He was a special teams dominator in college. But on the field, I mean, he's the de facto number one on that team. And I insi- I've been insistent all offseason, look, you bring in Debo Samuel, and Jalen Hurd and these other peripheral wide receivers. Yes, Marquise, Marquise Goodwin is still there, but none of those players are going to do what Dante Pettis does in this offense. Yeah. I think he can catch 80 passes. I don't want to speak too much because we're, we're going to be talking more about Dante Pettis here in a, a short while, but I went and I watched some interviews with him. He was talking about how the the playbook, Shanahan's playbook, is a lot. And he said coming out of college, like he – Every play when he'd get to the line, he was just so in his head trying to figure out what to do, where the defense is at, what the play call was, all of that stuff that he he was – this was all based on a question of how how's Jimmy Garoppolo been this year compared to last year. And he said, honestly, I, and it wasn't a joke, he says, I don't remember how Garoppolo was last year. I couldn't concentrate on that. <laughs> and But th- my point in saying that is that's where Debo Samuel and Jalen Hurd are going to be this year. They're rookies. They're not going to come in and just steal the show from Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis has a huge leg up. And while I don't like that the Niners, look, they tried to go after Ode- Odell Beckham. They tried to go after Antonio Brown. They did draft wide receivers. So their confidence in their actions hasn't been completely poured into Pettis. But he's great, and he has the opportunity, and I fully believe he's going to succeed. Great draft capital, early second round pick, and and were- flashed on film. To me, there you know, of all the players in the NFL, if you had to say, okay, pick five players to be the next big thing, he's in that category for me. Uh, he's, he's in got- that category for me as well. Yeah. And and in addition, so you you talked about how good he was on special teams. Th- that's understated. Like he's maybe the best special teams player in. NCAA history when it comes to you know return touchdowns and things like that didn't do much as a rookie in limited opportunity but they came out this year and said they're going to give him another chance to win that job as a special teams returner and if he ends up adding a couple touchdowns in that department through that department the way that Antonio Brown has did, or Ty- Tyree Kill did deal with a knee sprain two separate occasions missed three weeks and missed two weeks based on the injuries I might not want him on special teams but he's an explosive player so do you buy the hype? I guess we just said we did based yes. on that. Uh, how about this one? The Athletic is reporting Ravens tight end Mark Andrews looks bigger, stronger, faster than last season. Mark Andrews was the most impressive of the rookie tight ends. Hayden Hurst dealt with injuries. It seemed Lamar Jackson didn't seem like he could throw the ball very consistently at all, but if there was a player he could connect with, it was Mark Andrews last season. Another player I picked up on purpose in Dynasty this offseason. A big old target. Do you believe in Mark Andrews as the best of the uh, tight end options in Baltimore? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you go scroll back through your podcast app uh, to our Splain Yourself episode, I had to explain why I was I was high on Mark Andrews back then. Uh, nothing has changed. Great. Uh, Gerald Everett, the Rams' biggest surprise this offseason. I do not buy it. Okay. I do not care. I think Gerald Everett is a good tight end in a system – that is going to focus on their three main wide receivers. Gerald Everett will be fine. Maybe you could stream him in the right matchup, but irrelevant. If one of those big three goes down again, like we saw last year, maybe you look his way a little bit. I will stream him more often. (laughs) New York Jets GM Joe Douglas calls Robbie Anderson a very pleasant surprise. I think that was just based on watching some film. It was. Which you really should have done probably already. Well, I mean, he just oh, got – who's he, that guy? He just got the job, obviously. So he's going back and watching <laughs> to know who his players are, and he was surprised. He saw what we've talked about. He gets past the defense. He, he gets He's a good player. Him. He is a good player. Um, how about this one? A lot of hype around the Arizona Cardinals offense, Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray. Uh, they were the worst in the league by far last year, only 14 points a game. Albert Breer talking about Christian Kirk being the most impressive receiver on the roster, the best receiver on the roster during offseason program. 
We know that Christian Kirk and Kyler Murray already have a leg up on the rest of the competition in Arizona, having played in systems similar to Cliff Kingsbury's and played together. I mean, mm-hmm. people don't remember this. Christian Kirk, Ky- uh, Kyler Murray played together at Texas, Texas A&M for a season. Do you buy any hype around Christian Kirk? Is he somebody that is in that sneaky, undervalued category, or is it kind of hands-off because of how bad the offense was last year? So I, I talked about this. on a, I was on a podcast with Pat Fitzmorris, uh, and he, he asked this question. And I, I do buy the hype that if an Arizona wide receiver is to establish themselves as a fantasy dominator, I think it will be Christian Kirk because of all the reasons laid out. But I also think a rookie wide receiver coming in, as much as I love Kyler Murray, it's going to be very – very impractical to think he throws over 4,000 yards. You divide that up by you've got David Johnson, a great pass catching option, Larry Fitzgerald, and then all of the smorgasbord of rookies coming yeah, in. Yeah, Andy Isabella, Hakeem so, Butler. So I don't necessarily buy the hype of Christian Kirk. You know, if someone's going to do it, it will be him, but I think that the ball's going to be spread around, and I don't, I'm not in love with his draft cost right now. All right, once you pop, you can't stop. Byron Pringle. More oh. hype on Byron Pringle. <laughs> the most surprising offseason standout in Kansas City Chiefs camp. And if I hadn't said Kansas City Chiefs camp right there, I don't think you knew or would know who I was talking about. But Byron Pringle actually flashed last preseason for Kansas City. They could be without Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. Miko Hardman is not established in the offense. Demarcus Robinson ha- is probably what he is at this point. Is there any reason to pay attention in a dynasty league to Byron Pringle? Yes, there's Pat. Oh, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. That's reason enough to pay attention. I mean, right now, I see, look, Byron Pringle, he's, he's original, <laughs> but maybe soon he could be sour cream and onion. Because, you know, uh, you, you're going to want the sour cream and onion version. Byron Pringle over Richard Matthews on your Dynasty ads? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it, this was interesting. We can talk about it for a second before we get into the mailbag. Um, out of New Jersey, uh, NewJersey.com reporting, it's premature to expect Miles Sanders to become the Eagles' number one back. It's premature he's when he's not on the field at all yet. Pretty hard. So I would agree with that. And then there's some news out of Boston, out of the Boston Globe. Nikhil Harry didn't have the best mini camp. Yeah, th- pretty hard to have a good mini camp as a rookie in New England. Certainly, it's a very difficult system. It's also ironic because I feel like a couple weeks ago people were saying he was doing really good in mini. Yes. So I don't know. Yes. But the one uh, did did you mention JJ Orsega Whiteside? Because that go for it. That that has been such a common thing this off season from um, you know the whole the whole program rookie mini camp the OTAs. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside has a rapport already, especially in the red zone, from what the beat writers are saying with Carson Wentz. So this is two things. One, I don't, I don't love rookie wide receivers. I don't like to draft them. Um, but in Dynasty and how you view his outlook, I really like that going forward. And more so for what he's going to provide as another legit red zone weapon for Carson Wentz, I am I'm really excited to see how many – Specifically, the touchdown numbers for Carson Wentz. It, it seems tough. Well, see, this is why I love Carson Wentz. You got Goddard. You got Ertz. You got Arcega Whiteside, Alshon, yeah, D-Jax. D-Jax. Yeah. Wentz is, Wentz is looking mighty fine, and, and he just got paid. All right, that was today's news and notes. A reminder, grab the Sleeper app, the best, most flexible platform for the modern fantasy football player. Download the Sleeper app for free today. We also want to thank a couple of our sponsors that keep this show free, coming to you each and every week. Want to thank HelloFresh, longtime sponsor of the show. HelloFresh makes conquering the kitchen a reality with deliciously simple recipes in fresh, pre measured ingredients delivered straight to your door. I love HelloFresh. My sister subscribed several uh, months ago, loves it. Found a love for cooking every single week. Man, I love three f- meals. I love food so much. Uh, all meals come together in 30 minutes max. So you don't, you know, when I say she developed a love for cooking, that didn't take long. You don't have to. Every meal doesn't take a, a a long time. Thirty minutes max. Calls for less than two pots and pans. Requires minimal cleanup. You eat fresh. Um, three plans to choose from: classic, veggie, and family. So get out of that recipe rut. Start cooking outside your comfort zone. For eighty dollars off your first month of HelloFresh, go to hellofresh.com/footballers80. Enter the code footballers80 
That's HelloFresh.com slash footballers80 and enter the code footballers80 for $20 off your first four boxes, each of your first four boxes. And we would like to thank Turo, who is the largest car sharing marketplace in the world. They're available in the U.S., Canada, U.K., Germany, over 10 million users worldwide. They are doing to the car rental industry what has needed to be done for so long and and you know it's it's essentially they've got the widest selection of cars available there's there's no one that comes close you choose the car that you want you're going to meet the owner do an exchange of keys and you've got you know you can use it for anything you don't have to be just traveling if you need a truck for moving you know you don't own one you think oh man why didn't i buy a truck yeah i love that you might not need to just get, get a pickup truck for moving day or, or a convertible for a weekend getaway if you're in the market for a new car why don't you test it out go to turo rent it for a couple days see if you love it it's an awesome thing uh, awesome new service you can download the turo app which is t-u-r-o on the app store or google play you can visit turo.com and you can get 25 dollars off your first trip when you sign up with the promo code footballers at checkout terms apply all right uh, there's only one more question then before we get into the mailbag and this i'll do it i guess jason's got the mailbag drop prepare yourself world sorry mailbag Mailbag. it's fine that was fine there's no mic it's no mic but you didn't you look the train is still on the tracks <laughs> That's all I'm saying. The cars are on the road. Yeah. It's no Mike, but it's no Brooks. Right. Which is good <laughs> which in is, a good way. Yes. This past week, we had our foot cast, and there was no Mike because Mike is stranded. Mike is living in an airport. And Brooks, I, I, I just put him on the spot, and, you know, he has to do what I say. It's one of the rules around here. Mm-hmm. And he dropped the mailbag. Oh, he, did, he, he went he, hard in the paint. I mean, he blew out our ears. And uh, it was scary. It was frightening. Mm-hmm. I was I was crying a little bit. You remember that? But he got through it, and he did it. I did what I can. You can listen to it on the footcast. So if you have a question for the show, we're here to help. Visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to get into some voicemail questions, um, a variety of questions that came in off of YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and the email so let's go ahead and kick it off with a voicemail. Hey, Ballers, this is Kyle from Los Angeles, California. Who do you think is the more valuable handcuff to target, Daryl Henderson or Latavius Murray? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Uh, I'll let you answer, Jay. I'll, I'll set the table a little bit. I mean, Latavius Murray is the handcuff for Alvin Kamara. He's more than a handcuff. He's going to be a rotational player in a Saints offense and running game that historically scores the most rushing touchdowns in the league every year. Right. And, um, you know, if you're talking who's the more valuable handcuff and you're only speaking of it in terms of the handcuff. Yeah, you've got the other player. If, then and then it's got to be Daryl Henderson. He's in the even better offense, and Todd Gurley has the issue in front of him. But I, I lead with that only to say that, I would not be taking Daryl Henderson in any league over Latavius Murray. And what's crazy is independent of handcuff. Independent of well, handcuff. What if, just, if you have Gurley and you you're in the sixth round and you can take Latavius Murray or Daryl Henderson, you're taking Henderson. Yes, if okay. I have to handcuff Gurley, but I'm not taking someone else's handcuff. If someone else has Gurley, I'm taking Latavius Murray because I think Murray is going to be a normal weekly player that you can put in your flex, put in your running back spot if you need to. And you're going to get production. I don't think that happens from Daryl Henderson without a massive. Because here's here's the truth. Henderson should Let's be on the say field. Let's say Henderson should be on so the field. But so can Malcolm Brown. And that's what I wanted to bring up. The fact that if Gurley goes down, it's not a guarantee that it's Daryl Henderson. I think it is. The, the 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 capital that was invested in them is, but we think that all the time, especially with And then rookies. Alfred Blue takes the field. Exactly. Yeah, you're 100% right. We want the sexy player. But the teams like the reliable player. They trust Malcolm Brown in pass he protection, things system. like that. Do you know who I loved, loved last year going into the draft? Who? John Kelly. Great running yeah, back. Yeah, you did. And the Rams loved him. They took him with their pick. And then when Gurley went down, they went off the street and got C.J. Anderson because they didn't like him. He didn't, he didn't catch on to that system. Malcolm Brown was injured. Malcolm Brown knows the system. There's a trust He's, aspect. Exactly. All right. Uh, here's an interesting question. Um, very important question came in on 
Instagram. Brooks felt, found it to be an important one for the show. So look, I throw him a bone every once in a while. You're stuck in a dungeon guarded by a dragon. Hmm. Classic situation. Mm -hmm. Been there. And you have to draft one player to help you get out of the dungeon. Who is your pick? This is like the easiest question I've ever heard. It's so clear. I mean, everybody out there is thinking it. Everybody knows it. I mean, you know it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's it, his name again? It clearly has to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. To get has you to out be. of the... Look, you could go like the the war, you could, the Kelsey style, right? Like the, the Travis Kelsey, the yeah. war... The, uh, Kelsey the warrior. Get, Kelsey's not beating up that dragon. He's going to get eaten like anybody else. <laughs> I like. I'm not going brute strength. I'm going mine. I'm going so Harvard, going Harvard graduate. Grad? I'm going second highest uh, wonderlick of all time. Fastest wonderlick score of all time. And he's got he's the beard that says, I've been in a dungeon before. <laughs> I, I've played Dungeons and Dragons. He th for a guy that smart, he threw a lot of interceptions. He's that smart, he's but he's a risk that crazy. taker. I, and he will throw one or two footballs at that dragon before he takes you he's out. He's going to tell you when to run, <laughs> and I hope he's right because I don't want to be his interception. Oh my gosh, I want to be in there with Rosen, but only to, you know. So as he's the bait, yes, like you can out, <laughs> you can outrun him, grab him, and then you go. All yeah, right, they, they, they can each work. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the first ground pedigree with the dragon he'll he'll be very interested let's jump in another voicemail question hey footballers this is tanner from wisconsin most of my league majority are big packers fans do homer teams affect draft capital of certain players should you draft differently knowing that they'll uh, have different trade value for example like aaron jones do you guys ever draft with that in mind let me know thanks love the show bye well that's kind of two separate questions yes it absolutely 100 percent affects the draft placement 100 percent but I don't necessarily draft players to trade them. No, I. So the only way that I would do that, right? Like, let's say you're, you know, we're in Arizona. Let's say half of our league are Cardinals fans, and they are overvaluing David Johnson or Christian Kirk or Kyler Murray, whatever. That means I'm not going to get any of those players. Like, if I'm in a league where I, you know, everybody loves a certain team, I'm not going to overpay because you're not going to overpay for trade value, right? Well, certainly not for trade value. Um, but where I would do it for trade value is when you're in a league where there's that guy and he loves that one team and he always... I don't know, let's say like the Chargers. Like right, somebody like let's loves say he loves the Chargers. the Chargers. Right. And he's already drafted a couple and, and at, at a good value because he can't, you know, he's not half the league. He's not inflating everyone. At a good value, a Charger drops there and you know what you can get from that guy... I've I've been in a situation where when I'm using that as a tiebreaker and I'm like, uh, this guy's good value here. I could probably flip him for something crazy from him later on. That's where I might consider it. Sometimes people, uh, when we're being interviewed, they ask us like some general fantasy football questions. And they say, what are some of the biggest mistakes that people make if you're a brand new fantasy player? Or what are some simple things you can do to improve as a new player? And one of the go-tos is always, please don't favor your home team to mm -hmm. some excessive degree that makes you, you know, I, I see people end up with three players from the, from their home team. Even if you're going to overpay for goodness sakes, please just do it one time. Right. Please just get, you, you love Carson Wentz and you overpay for him. Sure. Please don't go into your season with like Wentz, Ertz, Goddard and D and, and four of your eight players are starting from, I mean, you can, Right, but at the, fundamentally, if that's most fun, if losing is the most fun thing to you, yeah. If you want to do that, just do it in leagues with other Foot Clan members so please, that they can win. Please. All right, YouTube question. This one comes in from Nick. What is the proper amount of time per pick for a twelve-man draft? Mm. So uh, it's a little different, obviously. Between I'm going to assume this question is offline draft because if it's an online draft, the software is going to tell you, and I don't care. Make no, it yeah, a, I mean, make, make it a minute. I mean, I don't. Well, then, no, I mean, that that's probably the question. The software lets you pick two, three, four, four or five minutes. I would say two minutes would be fair for that. But um, in, a, in an offline league, I like giving people time. Three minutes is like a, 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 t a timer without a hard cap where, you know, when that happens, find a way to shame as a league. Find a way to shame the person who has not yet made their pick. Um. But the you know you want trades to happen. You want interaction. You want talking between owners during the draft. Like I love that stuff. I couldn't agree more. I actually would go so far as to recommend 
that you all do offline drafts regardless. Yes. You know, there are situations, if everybody's remote, if you can't do it locally, that type of stuff, sure, you don't do it offline. But draft day is our Christmas. Why would you want Christmas to be over sooner? Mm -hmm. Have a little fun with it. Give yourself some margin at your draft. If you want to pause because everybody because the food just arrived, if you want to give people extra time, generally they're not going to take advantage of it. I'm 100% on board with that. I agree completely. So, uh, And if not, if you're going to set it online, I mean, I don't know. I hate having super fast time limits for the first couple of rounds. Not fun. Yeah. All right. Jason, you're once again just <laughs> – I'm going to call you out every time you're wiggling over there. Oh, then I'll start doing it when I'm on screen, I guess. Oh, did Brooks, did you guys coordinate that wiggle I'm again? Not, I'm protecting you as much as I can. I Jason. appreciate it. Brooks. I'm sorry. Andy's I'm not selling you down the river. The river. Um, it's distracting. It's just me and the bear, and the bear doesn't move. And if you're moving that much. Okay. I will try. I will do my best to not distract you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Auction draft. Mm-hmm. Read your question. Uh, Ricky in Utah wants to know. You, <laughs> I'm scared. You guys typically talk about snake drafts. I'm wondering your guys' thoughts on an auction draft. Would you ever do an auction draft? Yeah. Why or why not? Look, auction drafts are great. They're very fun. The whys to do an auction draft are, are that everyone gets a chance, right? If, if you love a player, like I love on Johnson. Uh, let it be known. I had I no idea. I know I don't have any I don't have any stock in him in Secret any of our love. in any of our main leagues. He's a keeper or it's a dynasty or whatnot. But I want a chance at getting him. And there's certain players like that where, it, depending on where you fall in your draft room, you're either going to have to crazy overdraft, or you're just not going to get a chance to 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 get the players you want. So it's it's also something that is I think more advantageous for the experienced player. They know every player a little bit better so you know everyone is participating on every pick you're not waiting when you're on the turn for 30 minutes to pass by so that you can have a moment of strategy again you're doing it the whole time so this is great the downside to auction is going to take a lot longer an in-person auction is intense it's going to require that knowledge very tough to be a commissioner and run the auction and draft your own team. Jason, I, you've done that before. I have done that once. And the, look, if you're wanting to start an auction league and you think you can be the auctioneer of an offline auction league and f leave with a good team, <laughs> you, you're wrong. Or they just have to do it better, or you're just than, better than you than did. I am for sure. <laughs> There is a great auction article, several great auction articles on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, that go into more detail on auction drafts. I will say this. People that are auction fans, oh yeah, they're pretty big auction fans. They, uh, they love it. They believe that everybody that they know should only do auction. All right, another voicemail question. Hey, ballers, this is PK from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Love the show. But I want to know... Is it worth it in a dynasty league to send two or three potential future stars for a win-now type player? For example, DJ Moore, Christian Kirk, Dante Pettis for a TY or Mike Evans type player? Thanks, guys. Hope to hear from you. Brooks, did he say the league format? Yeah, dynasty. Oh. Sure. You can do that. I mean, that, that, that's too much specifically. Like that exact example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't send Christian Kirk, Dante Pettis, and um, what was the other player? Do you remember? Well, yeah. DJ Moore. It wouldn't DJ be, Moore. I wouldn't trade those three players for T.Y. Hilton no, so I could win this year. I think he was giving examples of players like that. And I will say this. Last season, despite my love for Dante Pettis, I worked a trade that incorporated the two main components was Dante Pettis for T.Y. Hilton, almost identical, because I was in win now and wanted to make a championship run. Did that. And How'd that work out for and, you? Ask Brooks. I don't remember. Brooks, What? who was in the championship? I don't remember either, Jason. Oh, you don't? Oh, it just came to me. You, it was you and I in the championship, and I won. Because um, Pettis, Pettis was not on your team. was not on my team. Um, T.Y. Yeah. Hilton was. I, I think that there's absolutely – you've got to go hard when you're in your championship window. And the thing is, is if you win, if you get that championship, they ain't erasing it from the – trophy i mean no, it's we've yours tried forever. i've tried to etch your name off of there for months but you just don't want to go overboard you can't you, you you don't want to sell the farm where you're crippled in the future because there's still you know the odds are that you're not going to win the championship just statistically speaking 
and you have to be okay with that. But I would, I would definitely, if you're, if you're a competing team halfway through the season, make a move, send a prospect, bolster your lineup, and go after the championship. All right, this question comes in from Instagram. Nick Pretzel. He sounds delicious. Nick Pretzel writing in. Not sure if he he's probably that's probably a nickname. You know, I doubt uh, it. two quarterback draft strategy questions. Says Bonjourno. Oh, Bonjour. I'll be participating in my first two quarterback league this year. I know you all normally speak on waiting for a quarterback, but does this strategic approach change during your draft uh, in this kind of a, uh, of a league? If so, how much does it vary? As a, it, it definitely changes. Yeah, it changes a lot. Now, the strategy to me doesn't really <clears throat> change much. You're still, I mean, if you're a tier based drafting advocate, meaning you are taking guys. Uh, not so much like what round you're taking them, but based on the other players in those positions and what tier, what caliber of players are left, I'm still taking the guys in the later tier of quarterbacks. I'm still looking at the value that guys like Dak Prescott represent relative to where he goes within the quarterback groups than I am looking to the value that Pat Mahomes can buy you because it's a two-quarterback league. I don't – I'm mostly – agree with you it does depend on your league size like we're in these fantasy cares eliminator leagues right now where we're drafting you know 17 people 17 two, teams two, 17 t teams sure. two quarterback league you have to place a premium on getting a quarterback i mean yeah one you have to get one quarterback in the somewhat you know first three or four picks at the latest because there's just not going to be enough left i mean you're not talking about a one-off position anymore this is not the tight end quarterback argument Sir, uh, certainly. I mean, that, sir, uh, sir, <laughs> sir, how dare you, <laughs> sir? You have offended me. <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, if everybody in the league drafts two quarterbacks and that's a two quarterback league. Well, yeah, Pat Mahomes went uh, went three in that league. Andrew Luck went five. Aaron Rodgers went eight. So you had three quarterbacks in the first 10 picks well, in a two quarterback 17 team a, league. It's a two quarterback 17 team league. So by my incredible math. That's 34 quarterbacks that, that is, need to be started. You doubled it. I see what you and did. And there are 32 teams in the NFL. So obviously that would change strategy. But for Mr. Pretzel, I believe that looking at, you know, quarterbacks. Look, we, I've, I've been in these leagues where so I So would you I be okay with Dak Pretzel as your number one quarterback? Yes, 100%. You would? 100%. If I could have, it depends more. 200%? It depends more on who my second quarterback is. I mean, I would be fine if I had Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Phillip Rivers, Kirk Cousins, uh, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, any two of those guys. And, and when I grab those guys, who they're all valuable quarterbacks. They're going to play well. And personally, I want three quarterbacks in a two-quarterback league. That means my running backs and wide receivers are much better. So that that's my strategy in a two-quarterback league. I will certainly – in the – the point you're making, it's not like running backs become less scarce. Right. Just because you have two quarterbacks starting. But they fall further in the draft because sure. more people are taking early quarterbacks, so you can actually get better running backs mm. than in most leagues. All right, Twitter question from Yakov Friedman. So should there be a minimum of $1 for fab bids? There should absolutely 100% never, ever, ever be a minimum of $1 for fab bids. No, that's disgusting. <laughs> here's <laughs> tell us what you really think here's why i'm so passionate about that we talk about you know oftentimes people write in and say oh my league we have these roster um caps like oh yeah transaction transaction caps. caps i can only, only pick up so many trades i can only trade five times in the year i can only make five waiver pickups and it's like what why are you limiting? You're going to have fun four times this year. <laughs> right. It's like this is. Pick them wisely. We're playing a game and you're saying, but you only get to play a little. Okay. <laughs> Monopoly. We're, <laughs> we're going to change rules where you can only buy one house an hour. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it's just dumb. And, and the thing is, is that's effectively what you're doing when you make a minimum of $1 for bidding. If you run out of your money, you're out of transactions. Zero dollar fab bidding is an important part to a fun, active, constantly, you know, uh, a live league Yes, that doesn't just run stale at the end of the year. I agree with you. Instagram question from Rigo says, what can I expect from your live show? First time going, 
Is it like a Spitballers episode where you guys just talk about random things or more of a Q&A? Great question. That is a great question. Um, I didn't see the end of that coming. Yeah, it is It is a live podcast episode. So that would be the first thing to mention, right? There is. Uh, it's a real show. It will go live in our feed um, as a podcast episode. Like Chicago's show is, Brooks, is that Tuesday's show? Yes, sir. It'll be out on Tuesday. You'll listen. If you're not in Chicago, you're going to hear. We only give Brooks four days to edit it. So you're going to hear the Chicago show on Tuesday. It's going to be a breakouts and bust episode we're really excited about. If you are in the Chicago area, your incredibly loud laughter oh, it will, be will be on the podcast. Included. And your questions will be. That's one of the unique things about the live shows. We do a live mailbag at the show. And it's it's a rock concert. We'll we'll have the we'll Jason have the jumps smoke off the stage and the light show, and we'll have everything going. And then afterwards, we get to do a meet and greet. You know, we get to shake hands, take we pictures. do one before and after. Yes, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. You should come out. We got five shows this year: Chicago, New York, L.A., Phoenix, San Francisco. Ballerslive.com for tickets. Come enjoy the show. It is uh, look. We like to have fun. Every yeah. here's the thing: is it like a spitballers episode? All of these episodes are, I mean, all of our shows are kind of the, they're all like each other. They're like each other. We, we talk to each other the same way on all the shows. Right. We, we actually don't change Mm -mm. the cast. No. Well, at our live shows (laughs) a little bit. (laughs) Right. We might have Mike, (laughs) so it'll be very different than what you're used to right now. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's jump into another question here. David in Minneapolis has a question for us. Jason, how do you guys factor in potential injuries into your rankings? So two different ways he wants that question answered. uh, Injury-prone players like Fournette or Eifert or random injuries to random players like ACL tears and freak injuries. How do you think about injuries in general? There's two ways that we factor them in, or at least I'll speak for myself here, two ways that I factor them in. And I'll throw out the freak ACL tear out the window. I mean, I you know, unless someone's got seven and Cooper I'm, Cup, for example. Yeah, Coop, so oh, well, that's different. That's coming off of one. Oh, that, I like, thought that's what he meant. No, like I think he's saying, how do you you know project random injuries that happen? And you just can't. But if they're coming off of an ACL, you're going to look at the timeline. You're going to look at the recovery, the history of other players at that position. What do they usually do when they're back? How long does it take until they're on 100%? Those type of things. Regarding the first type of player, the, the Fournette, like, like this is the Fournette rule. How do you stat Fournette? Because if Fournette plays 16 games, he's probably going to be a lock for a top 15 running back based on volume. Hell will have frozen over, over, however. Right. So what do you do? And and for for my process, a lot of times what I'll do is I will go in and I will stat. I start I start by statting out every player for 16 games. I, I, I look at a 16-game calendar. That way, every number that I'm attributing each player versus another one makes sense. And then for some of those players, I'll go in and I'll do something like I'll take a game away. I'll, I'll basically – take 15 sixteenths of the stats I gave them and attribute that so that they are a little bit lower. And then the other thing is for the ultimate draft kit purposes, um, you, you, we, we build those into our risk rating. So you'll see players out there like Fournette when you're drafting and he's in a certain tier, but his risk might be higher than those right around him. And you could factor that in at your draft. Yeah. So from a roster construction perspective, if you're looking at risk ratings in the ultimate draft kit, Maybe you're not stacking four or five guys on your team that have high risk ratings if you're wanting to build a roster that has a little bit more predictability when it comes to injury. You know, it's it's always interesting because even in the Fournette example, let, let's say that Leonard Fournette misses two games, all right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say we know that. Okay. Well, you know, that changes his year-end stats in total, but it doesn't change his game-to-game stats. Right. So if you believe he's going to be a very productive player when he's active, then it's worth it. Then it's probably not going to be a huge factor for you. Like it, it's like anything, you know, we talked last week on overemphasizing keeper choices. If you're in a league that only has two or three keepers, people can overemphasize, oh my gosh, I just got to, I got to draft youth for those three keeper spots and it's not really worth it. You can overemphasize injury risk. You know, there are players that, you know, Dante Pettis was injured two times last year. Mm-hmm. Is he coming back healthy? How does he look? You know, do, can you throw it out the window? Here's where I think you don't overreact, and I know Brooks will agree with this. 
players that are currently dealing with injuries. Like that like if a player currently has a hamstring issue when you're drafting, I I'm going to go ahead and take that into massive consideration. I'm not going to take just like I would view that worse than an injury history. So Fournette's, you know, 100% in camp, 100% in preseason, 100% and I come to my draft and he's there or uh, you know, someone who maybe doesn't have quite the same injury risk is dealing with a hamstring issue. That one to me looks more applicable than the injury history, the quote unquote injury prone label. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Good question. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more. All right. You good for one more? But it better be the best. Oh, uh, this question. one's so good. It's oh, from Zach wait. on Zach. Facebook. I hear a lot of Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley love at the number one pick, but not much about Kamara at all. Is he just falling off the hype train, or is this a purposeful thing that I am witnessing? No, I mean, look, it's 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 neither of those. It's not a purposeful slight against Alvin Kamara, and I don't think he's falling off the hype train. When If you go back and you remember last year when – Mark Ingram was gone those those first four weeks he was the number one running back and it wasn't close it wasn't like he was really good but so were five other players I believe three out of the first four weeks he was the number one running back he was unbelievable so there's a case to be made that he could be the number one guy this year now that Mark Ingram is gone Latavius Murray will fill that role but maybe he fills that role to 90 percent and an extra 10 percent goes over to Kamara Kamara's great However, the reason he's not in that conversation with Zeke and, and Saquon is because Kamara's efficiency numbers are outstanding, awesome. He's so good, but he doesn't get the volume. Volume is much easier to bank on than efficiency. You can, you know, for the amount of carries that Kamara has, and you look at how many touchdowns come from that level of carries, it's just hard to, to say that's going to always happen because it's, it's just very rare. And you're talking about deciding between great you know, options. Yeah, it's option one or two or three in the draft. You're not talking about a big gap. So it's not to disparage Kamara. It's just it's easier to bank on the, the huge quantity of, of carries. You know exactly what the offense is going to do from a total touch perspective. Look, if, Kamara, if you told me Kamara was going to get that with the efficiency numbers, you're fine. But, he, you know. He's not built exactly the same as those other two guys either. He's had a concussion uh, history. So I think those are the small things that change it. Yeah, I would rather have 350 touches than 250 touches. Ah, yes, pretty simple. Pretty interesting. Pristine deal of the day. All right. Today's pristine deal of the day. A T.Y. Hilton signed Indianapolis Colts jersey. JSA witnessed Autograph, $38.61. Brooks put four exclamation points after it because the price was so insane. That's that's true. I had not seen that. I mean, I just need to redo my wardrobe with signed yes. sports mem memorabilia. Forget framing them on the wall. I'm just going to start wearing them everywhere because it's cheaper than buying the yeah the jersey itself. It's Or it, apparently a, a long sleeve shirt. Um, PristineAuction.com, if you head over there, Use the registration code BALLERS. You get $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Um, it's free to register and browse. There's hundreds of daily auctions. Make sure you use the registration code BALLERS. It'll help you out. You got any parting thoughts, Jason? Any parting words? You parting, think we're going to see Mike uh, anytime think, in the near I, future? Uh, I think near future is relative <laughs> enough. Is relative <laughs> enough to say yes, whether he will be... What city do you think he gets to first, Phoenix or Chicago? Is he just going to end up See, having to go straight to Chicago It's on important Friday? he's there in Chicago. Yes. He's a pretty good hype man up on stage. Those tattoos blaring. I'll do a flip if he's not oh, there. If he's not there. Wow. That's going to hurt. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Hey, Foot Clan, don't forget about Turo. If you're in the market to rent a car, it's the largest car sharing marketplace in the world where you can book any car you want from a community of trusted hosts, exotic sports cars, pickup trucks, the widest selection out there. Download the Turo app, that's T U R O, on the 
App Store or Google Play or visit Turo.com and get $25 off your first trip when you sign up with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. Terms apply.